Welcome back. Seth Walder joining us, uh, the uh, analytics guy. <laughs> and we'll try to, uh, since we can't figure out common sense, maybe we'll we'll go to the uh, the database to try to understand what's happening. Seth, good afternoon. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We're all confused. We listened to the CFP committee chairman, Gary Barta, talk about uh, analytics last night. And, and I'm, I'm putting words in his mouth, of course, but you know, he basically said, besides watching the game, this is what we saw. Uh, <laughs> what is your takeaway from where we are right now, three weeks into the CFP? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty, that was a pretty interesting comment, Paul. I'm, I'm with you. I, I think there's it's a murkier picture this year. I think it's pretty interesting, to be honest with you. I mean, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things. The, the hardest thing for me is to say that comment. And now this is the thing that's, that I've looked at this whole time. Why Oregon is where it is in the rankings. Uh, if you're looking at numbers and, and relying on numbers, I'm not sure how you could justify Oregon being all the way up there. Well, let's, let's talk about that because I, I don't exactly know what they look at. They may be looking at your numbers for all we know. But I thought we moved on to this for the human element. The, the BCS you know, was, was, I think, one-third human and the rest uh, analytics. But when, a, when, a, when a, the committee chairman says something like that, I, I'm really wondering what kind of message he, he's sending and what kind of door he's opening if the games on the field theoretically don't matter. I agree with you, Paul. I also think that it's really important when we talk about statistics, that can be done poorly. And it's really important if you're going to rely on metrics that we do that properly. I mean, the whole idea of having a committee, of having rankings, is because we all know that college football, you can't just look at wins and losses because it depends on who you've played, right? And so you can't then, for example, look at opponent records because we know that records don't work. So it's, I think it's a – I agree with you. I think it's a, a little bit of a dangerous game. And I, I also think – and I'm not saying that we shouldn't rely on metrics. I, I think we should. I just think you have to be, you have to be smart about what, what you're doing. And then the other thing is, like, my general philosophy, this is, you know, me, is just that, that it should be about what you do – on the field and, and wins and losses should should matter a lot i mean accounting for who you're playing of course but like wins and losses should determine it. it's not not just a, a person sitting in a room saying i think team x is better than team y seth i don't know anything about analytics uh, i had lane kiffin on here yesterday and he relies on them a lot others do as well mm -hmm. I hear a lot more about it maybe in basketball than football, but as you look at college football, if we could, I'll, I'll be Gary Barter for a second, aside from the, the final score of the game, what, what really is important as you, as you evaluate? Yeah, so there's a few things when, if we're trying to like, if we're trying to determine predictively or how good a team actually is, then I think then you're looking at play-by-play -play information and you're using what we call expected points added instead of yards. And that's really important because, like, we have to know, like, the, the basis of all football analytics often boils down to that. What we have to know is, like, if I say to you, hey, we gained 10 yards on a play, that sounds good. But if it's third and 15, that's not, very, that's not a helpful play. If it's third and eight, that's an incredibly valuable play. We, we start to throw in that context. That's, that's key. In college football, you have to throw in the context of, how good is your opponent? That's absolutely crucial. And if we're trying to predict how good someone is, then what phase of the game that came in matters a lot. If you return two kicks for a touchdown in a game, that's great for you that day. That's not very, that, that's not very indicative of your ability to return kickoffs for touchdowns going forward. If you have an incredible passing attack, that's a repeatable skill. So it depends on what you're looking for, but I think that's the key. When it comes to descriptive, descriptively, though, Paul, I think – it's, it's all about strength of record. It's all about determining what did you achieve and who did you achieve it against. And that's really where I think we shine because we're comparing not just different teams' strength of schedules, but strength of records where we can look at and say, hey, is this 11-1 better than a 13-0? and And that's, that's really the question. Which brings us to Alabama uh, to start with. Uh, we all know what they've done. We know where they didn't win and the evaluation is going to become more serious down the road, especially if they don't beat Georgia. 
So let's say that is a really good game, Seth. They went out and, until then. They will have losses at Texas A&M, which, you know, whatever you want. You can take it. You can take that where however you want. And a loss, let's say it's narrow to Georgia, and you start comparing that to other other programs. Uh, ha, I know. I know. I haven't given you a final product to look at yet, but you know. You know who's in contention. How would you be able to do that? I'm, I'm, t take us in the mind of a committee member using data that you are very familiar with. I think that is a really interesting question, and here's where here's where the numbers shake out. If Alabama, if that if that happens, if Alabama loses to Georgia, and they and they end up with two losses, they would very almost certainly be a top four team in terms of FPI. So that's saying, are they literally one of the four best teams? The answer is yes, they would be. Uh, would they be one of the top four teams in strength of record? The answer is very likely yes. I can't guarantee it. There's, you know, other games have to happen, but very likely yes. And so that's why I think it's a really interesting question because we've never had a two-loss team, let alone a two-loss non-champion in the playoff. But at the same time, we're talking about a team that would be top four in terms of best, top four in terms of accomplishment. There's only been one other team that's been top four in both those things and that has not made the playoff. That's 2014 TCU. And so – the way that our numbers shake out right now, Paul, is if we say, if we put that in, win-win loss for Alabama, we give them a 75% chance to get in. And I know that it's going to bother some people because they're going to have two losses. But when you have two losses against that schedule, which includes Georgia, that would be, in our in strength of records view, very likely a top four strength of record. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.